data packs. There are so many things you can do with them. You can add custom crafting recipes, change loot tables, and even, you know, add the Vision Pro into Minecraft. The things you can do with data packs are near limitless, which I recognize can be somewhat daunting, but fear not, I am 100% me, and today I'll be your guide to data packs. Let's get started, shall we? Now because there are so many things you can do with data packs in Minecraft, I cannot possibly show you how to do all of it in just one video. Instead, this video aims to show you how to set up your data pack, and what goes where exactly, and I'll even show you some really cool tools made by the community that will help you in your data pack making journey. So why don't we get started setting up our data pack first. Whoosh. A data pack is essentially a really fancy special folder that lives inside your world's saves folder. And so we need to access your world's saves folder. And we do that by going out of your world, then we want to go back into single player, select our world, and then we want to click edit. And from here we just want to click open world folder. This will take you to whatever file browser your operating system happens to use. And from there we can continue. This here is what my world saves folder looks like. And as you can see there's a folder here called data packs. We can double click that and you can see it is empty right now. Now to set up your data pack what you want to do is create a new folder. And just call it whatever you want your data pack to be called. I'm going to call it beginner's guide. There we go. And this is pretty much as far as we are going to take it in our file browser. Whoosh. And that's because working from your file browser is going to get really annoying really, really very quickly. When making data packs, you're constantly opening new files and cross-referencing files. That's how I do it anyway. And it's hard to juggle all that. There is a really cool piece of software called Visual Studio Code that really helps out with the workflow. Now, Visual Studio Code is used by software developers to create apps and we are going to use it to create our data packs. Now, I will leave a link to Visual Studio Code where you can download it in the description down below over there somewhere. I'm going to let you install it on your own because of course installation will be different on every operating system. And once you have it installed, you can come back here and we'll continue our data pack making journey. Whoosh. Once you have VS Code downloaded, installed and opened, you should see something that sort of looks like this. It may differ a little bit. What's important over on the left, there should be a little menu and we want in the bottom here, we want to open extensions. Here are extensions that we can use to help us create data packs. So I have currently installed data pack helper plus by Spyglass and syntax mc function. Both of these are going to help us create data packs. So you can search for them in the search bar bar at the top. I cannot type while working, of course, but here you here you can see the data pack helper plus extension and the other one is there too somewhere. Once you're done over here installing these two extensions, what you can do is go over here to explorer and remember that data pack that we created in the world saves folder. Well, we're going to drag and drop it into here. There we go, our beginner's guide. Now currently there is nothing in it because we didn't put anything in it. So let's put something in here, shall we? The very first things first, Minecraft doesn't yet know that this is a data pack. So we want to create a new file that will tell Minecraft that this is a data pack. So we want to create a new file. We call it pack.mcmeta. Enter, it's going to create a file for us. And there's something wrong with this file because there's nothing in it yet. This is how we tell Minecraft that we have a data pack. We want to open curly brackets and hit enter just like this. Now, VS Code and the extensions that we just installed will tell us, give us some suggestions. We want to have a pack over here. Here we again want to open curly brackets and hit enter again. We can add a description or a pack format. And this one is the one that's really necessary. This one tells Minecraft what version of Minecraft it is made for. Now, I'm making it for 1.21 and 1.21.1, and the pack format number that's associated to that is 48. The data packs page on the Minecraft wiki has a list showing which pack format number corresponds to which version of Minecraft. So if you're not sure, I'll link it in the description below. You can check it out for yourself. Once we have the right pack format, we want to type a comma, enter and we want to maybe add a description. We want to put that in quotes 
and we just want to type whatever we want really the description here is also a really good place to put credits so um so definitely put your own name in there somewhere maybe an exclamation point because you're excited that you've made this of course and once you've got all of this sorted you can hit command s on mac and control s on windows to save your file and this is all good now you don't have to worry about this anymore what we want to do over here though is add a new folder which is done with the button right next to the new file button and we are going to call it data. This is where all of our data is going to be. Now here is a very important part that you need to pay close attention to because we need to create a namespace. Now a namespace separates other data pack stuff from your own data pack stuff. Other data packs will have their own unique namespace and you will need to create one for yourself as well. In fact, Minecraft has a namespace called, and you guessed it probably, Minecraft. Now these namespaces are important because if you don't use them right, they may conflict with other data packs. And of course, we don't want that at all. I'll give you an example. Hi, I'm up on the chair now. Now I've created a data pack called Percy's Toolbox. And that's the namespace that I've used, Percy's Toolbox. Now in my data pack, there are a lot of things that I can do. One of the things is I can sit the player. If I hit enter now, my character up there, you will start sitting. Boop, there we go. Hello. Now let's imagine that I didn't put that in the Percy's Toolbox namespace and instead I put it in Minecraft. Now let's imagine that you also didn't put it in your own namespace, but you put it also in the Minecraft namespace. Now if somebody were to trigger that, then that's going to cause a conflict because there are two sit functions there, which is the one that Minecraft is going to use. It's definitely going to break one of ours, and so that's not really good. We are going to have a conflict, and so that's why we need a namespace. It's also important that you spell out your namespace instead of just putting initials, for example, like P. T, because let's imagine someone created another data pack called Phantoms Terror. Yes, there you go, Phantom Terror. They may also put the initials PT in and it's just a completely different thing and it's again going to cause conflict. And so what I recommend you do when creating your own namespace is picking a very descriptive name of your data pack and then spelling it all out. A bit like this. So again here in the data folder we're creating a new folder and this will be our namespace. I'll call it beginners underscore guide yes there are some rules to which characters you can and cannot use they must all be lowercase and they cannot have spaces Whoosh. and that is essentially the basics of setting up a data pack congratulations you've done it let's talk about what you can put in here now then shall we the data pack page on the minecraft wiki shows all the things that you can put into minecraft data packs in fact over here it shows you the entire folder structure for data packs which is super useful over here, we have our data pack name, the folder that we created in our file browser. We have the pack.mc meta that we created. We have the data folder and in it, of course, the namespace. And in our namespace is where we can put all of these folders. And these folders correspond to the things that we want to add to our data pack. For example, if we want to add custom advancements, we put in an advancement folder. If we want to add I don't know, enchantments, we can put in an enchantment folder. And this of course goes for all of these things. Like I've said, there is a lot. And a lot of them use JSON files to store data. Now a JSON file is basically a file that has data, has information that is both easy to read for the computer, but also yeah, sort of easy to read for humans. It's meant to anyway, I'll show you what I mean. And so for this example, we'll be creating a custom crafting recipe by creating a new folder and calling it recipe. The recipe folder is where your crafting recipes go. And just as an example to show you what JSON looks like, I'll be dropping the banjo crafting recipe that you saw in the intro into here. And something is wrong. Oh yeah, right, I know, this is wrong, but it's actually right, so don't worry about this. Now this looks incredibly complicated, but as I said, it's also kind of meant to be readable. As you can see, it uses sticks, string, and leather to craft it, and it outputs then a goat horn with some custom data. And the good news is you don't actually have to know any of this. Because there is a really cool tool that will do it all for you. Yay! Whoosh. This web page over here is a collection of Miso's data pack generators. And these data pack generators will generate those JSON files that we just saw. 
Let's see, is recipe here? No, it's not popular enough, I guess. So we just go to all generators. And, well, there you go. There you go. There it is. All of this will generate that JSON file that we just looked at. We can put things in here like so, and it will automatically add it over here. Isn't that cool? And of course, this doesn't just go for crafting recipes. Let's go back. Well, let's change loot tables, shall we? It already automatically generates a loot table that gives you stone. That's cool. Now, of course, I realize that that interface is still a little bit tricky. There is a lot of stuff that you kind of just need to know when making data packs, and there are great tutorials for that out there on the internet. Uh, the reason I'm showing you is so that you now have this as a tool in your toolbox. So let's go looking at another tool, shall we? Whoosh. Back here in our own data pack, we are going to go here to beginner's guides or our namespace and make sure that we have that selected. Over here, we're going to create a new folder called function. In this folder, we can create MC function files. So let's um, create hello.mc function. There we go. Now an MC function files is basically a list of Minecraft commands that you can type in. As an example, right now I can type in as a command, say hello. And if I hit enter, you can see that I have F1 enabled. <laughs> There you go, you can see that it says hello here right now. It's pretty cool, huh? So that's a command that we can use in here. Say hello. Make sure you save it and you can go back into your world. Now every time you make a change in your data pack, you want to type the reload command. Very important. But then you should see that when we type in the function command, because we just created a function, we can already see it says here, beginner's guide, hello. This is our hello function. If we hit enter, it just says, hello. Look at that. Isn't it cool? Now, if you find commands a little bit tricky, I have just the tool for you. Let me introduce you to MC Stacker. This tool will help you create commands. You can see a whole bunch of them over here already. Let's say we want to give uh, myself a special item. So we can just hit GIF over here. We can say who we want to give the item to. Let's just say the nearest player. That's easy enough. And then over here, it says give item. We can pick the item. It can be any item from the list, which is basically any. Oh, I see pink wool. I like pink wool. We can say how many we want. Let's say three pink wool. We can even give it a custom name. I am pink. In fact, I'm fairly confident we can even make it pink. Do we have a pink here? Let's just do light purple. That seems, uh, oh, that seems pink enough. Once we are ready with our item as it is, we can go here to the top right. There is a whole box over here. We can hit the copy button. We can paste that into our hello function. Oh, now here's an important thing. You want to make sure that the forward slash at the front here is removed. Minecraft functions don't do well with the with the forward slash. Make sure you type reload in your own world. And now we can run that function again. And now I, it says hello. And I have the three wool in my inventory. It's really cool, isn't it? Whoosh. Of course, I'll link both Mesoch page as well as MC Stacker in the description down below. And this concludes our beginner's guide. You should now know how to set up your data pack, what a namespace is, and you should also know where to put all the folders for, let's say, custom crafting recipes, loot tables, and I don't know, predicates. As I've said many, many times, there are so many things you can do with data packs, and I can go on forever. So if you're interested, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and let me know down in the comments section if you'd like to see more context on any specific topic. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope to see you the next time. Bye-bye. Cramps. -bye.